a lot of confusion and debate also has been going on. For example, NOAX, we all are aware that they can be used for the non-valvular AF. However, can they be used for the valvular AF? That's what we are going to see and discuss about it today. So we all are very much aware what warfarin was actually meant to be. It was meant to be a rat poison, right? And it was like a accidental discovery. That's how it started being used as an anticoagulant for the humans as well. However, we all are very much aware about its limitations as well. Not only it's unpredictable, the narrow therapeutic range is there. In fact, uh, you need to monitor them re really regularly. And the offset or the onset also is uh, slightly unpredictable and takes a lot of lot time. There's a lot of drug to drug interactions. There's a lot of drug to food interactions as well. And in fact, uh, so that those were the reasons why the there has been ongoing research as well trying to see for those newer molecules and that's how they came up with a group of drugs called as NOAX. So the dabigatron was one of the first ones which was introduced around 2009 in fact. And later on of course there were newer medications like the rivaroxaban, apixaban, idoxaban and there are several more as well. So. What has been going on? So, I remember way back in 2012, um, uh, we were sitting with our Australian colleagues and friends and that's where we try to sit together and we try to think like, how does it affect? Can we compile the data, the safety, efficacy and the side effects data as well? And that's how the first paper, we wrote it up. Um, and then, once we wrote it up, we were requested by the editors, a journal, International Journal of Cardiology, can we compile the data also about the river oxaban and that's how the second paper in fact came up and all the data was compiled up and we showed uh, as, as well and of course published it as well. So we are very much aware already they are, they have been included in the guidelines, the guidelines, the latest guidelines which I'm talking about, it came in January 2019, the global expert consensus document, so it already said it that yes, it should be the first drug of choice, however, for the non valvular AF, right? So, uh, they should be preferred even over warfarin. So, now coming back to the, uh, the main question which we were talking about was about the valvular AF. So, this was one of the first publications which came way back in March 2017 from Renta uh, et al which supported on those parameters and when they try to do compare the data as how those uh, valvular heart disease patients whoever are treated with those no acts how are they doing so if we look carefully on this forest plot as well we can see it very clearly that the safety parameters not just on the parameters like the stroke even the major bleeding as well this there is significant benefit for example, for those patients who are using NOAX uh, versus the vitamin K antagonists like the warfarin. However, I remember whenever we used to uh, speak with our friends and colleagues as well, there used to be a lot of debate. Okay, yes, uh, with the valvular heart disease, but definitely not for the mitral stenosis or rheumatic heart disease as well. Can it be possible? So, this was the another paper as well. See, why I'm talking about all these publications because... I think we all will agree we what we po follow especially in current times is called as evidence based medicine if evidence is there that's what we are supposed to do um, we are supposed to follow it's not like this that uh, we have to be making fancy ideas that okay this needs to be done and uh, we are doing it no so this was another um, paper uh, or poster presentation which was presented recently in fact so they try to do a risk benefit analysis about the usage of NOAX, of course, in the for the valvular AF patients, in fact, and when they try to compare with the AFib patients, so they really noted was that in fact all the NOAX, however, except rivaroxaban, so all the NOAX was having uh, what was hap uh, happening is uh, they were much better than the warfarin, in fact, so. What we can learn from this is all the NOACs are pretty safe except rivaroxaban. But what was the problem with the rivaroxaban was 
there was higher bleeding risk. The major bleeding risk was pretty high, in fact. And that's why uh, the big question came that can we get a randomized controlled trial, in fact. So after this as well, okay, this was a positive data, in fact, which was favoring the NOAX usage. And as I was telling you, those parameters on which they try to notice it, which we can see it over here clearly in this slide, in fact. So as I was telling you, the most debatable talk has been like, what about those rheumatic heart patients, especially mitral stenosis? Uh, so this was one of the papers which has been trying to really uh, focus upon this uh, group, in fact, especially for the mitral stenosis. So even for the mitral stenosis, what happens is when they try to accumulate a data of like more than 2,200 patients, it seems that, in fact, it's, it's definitely a very promising therapy. And uh, so if one is going to really ask, can we use it in our clinical scenario, I would say when we try to see for those uh, benefits in terms of ischemic stroke or systemic embolism or even intracranial hemorrhage, this seems to be gaining more and more uh, evidence, more and more popularity as well. We need to uh, wait for further more data as well and if possible even randomized controlled trials as well. However, we should be there with an open mind and on a receptive side. Hopefully, we should be able to see some RCTs, prospective studies as well, pretty soon or maybe in the coming few years. Thank you so much for the patient hearing and feel free to share your comments um, in the box below and I will be looking forward. So in fact, this is the latest 2017 expert consensus document on a catheter ablation of AF which came in late 2017 and again uh, two of my papers has been referred. The low one was about that anticoagulation anyways, uh, which I already shared with you. Thank you so much.